Well, let's play a little bit more with AWS today. So uh, we're using AWS Academy, and today I want to use the Cloud Formations um, class to um, just start a Linux instance uh, so that you can play with it. So uh, since I'm a, uh, teaching this class, I'm going to switch to student view so I can see it as if I was a student. Um, I, you know, I'm actually going to go to a different one. Oh, I need to leave student view because I've done this recently and I want to make sure I get everything um, in it. So let's go to this cloud foundations. Um, so student view, modules. And the first thing I want to show you is that um, the first time ever using a lab is a bit of a pain for a student. So uh, I'm expecting I'm going to see that here. So I'm just closing all the modules. There's a lot of great content in this, uh, but we're going to use the sandbox, um, which is almost here, right here, sandbox environment. So the first time you ever use a lab at all in a class, it doesn't like to work well. So you see, this is just blank and that's par for the course. So I usually have to uh, click it three times. So that's one. So let's go back and let's click it again. Two, and this time it usually loads, but I have to come down and sit, hit accept or agree. And now it takes me to here, which I think you can click around and get to it, but I'm just going to go back. So this is try number three. So that only happens the first time you click on any lab in a specific course, but it expect it to happen. So I'm going to start this lab, then we're going to talk a little bit uh, because it's going to take a long time to start. Um, and it does that every time for the sandbox. Um, it creates an environment, it creates a bastion host and does some setup for you so that it, you can only do certain things. And those certain things are, are limited. So uh, I usually use T2 micros um, for almost all of, of the things that I do, especially in class. Um, it's amazing how much you can get done with one CPU, um, two CPUs, so uh, and just a little bit of memory. A lot of people think that you need more. Um, but that's usually not the case. So anyway, this is starting up. Uh, it's going to take a while. So uh, let me talk to you about some of the some of the challenges with this. So it only stays uh, around until you leave. So anything that we do is not going to stay. Um, I can upload my public key. I can use the private key. Uh, public key combo from um, this AWS instance um, uh, for my sandbox um, that's specific for my sandbox. Um, but anything I do, it goes away. Um, so what else? There are some other lab environments that, that don't go away. So we'll be looking at those hopefully soon. Um, I will not be doing videos next week because it's too busy. So I'm hoping to get one or two more done today. I don't know. Um, but this is is taking its time while it's doing it. I, I don't know how well you can see in the background, but there's this details that details will get you the private key, um, the public key, your your API keys. So if you're doing any uh, application programming or Linux, you're going to have to go to details. I'm not going to take you to the details tab because I don't want to have to blur everything out. Um, just extra work that uh, I'm not going to do. So that but that's where it is. You can click there. You can download the keys that AWS has created for you. But I don't like using the keys they created for me. Um, I like to use my own key um, because then I'm the only one that has the private key. So I don't like the fact that they create the public private key for you. Um, that's not what the private key is for. So main system, people who are system administrators, I do not expect they'd ever let AWS create their private keys um, it, within reason. There's probably some, uh, some systems that uh, people would do it so that they can control uh, the management a little bit better, but it, it's, I, I don't like it. Um, 
So AWS is what you click on to get to access to the console. Of course, we clicked on Start Lab. There's the End Lab. When you click on that, everything goes away. It, so EC2 instances are not only stopped, they're terminated in, in the Cloud Foundations course. Now, it's possible that that can change. Um, there's an instructions here. We can look at that. Uh, we can look at this a little bit too, but I want to I want to keep this up. Um, I wonder, you know, we can just open a new tab. Well, this is, is going, let's come into a new tab. And let's look at some of this, and then we'll come back. Well, that's loading. I'm going to jump over here. So, yeah, it's still in creation. So, there's specific things that you can do. So this gets updated on occasion, uh, but this kind of lists the things that you can do. Usually it tells you if they stay around or go, goes away, go away, but um, it's restricted. That's why we're able to use it uh, for, uh, for part of the class, because so you can't spin up everything you'd ever want in there. Um, IEM is, you can't really do, uh, you can't do Route 53 well. Um, so, but when you end the lab, when you end the lab, everything goes away and it auto ends after three hours. So you can see instructions here. Um, it's for three hours. So sometimes it says it's for three hours, but that's actually not the case. Um, and then, yeah, you can actually reset. When you reset, it'll reset the, the, the clock, the countdown clock. I believe it doesn't reset. Um, that's something I'm gonna have to try. I believe it doesn't not reset the environment. So maybe we'll try that during this video. Oh, cool, lab status ready, sweet. So we'll go to AWS. Now, a problem that I often have is students, once they've come into AWS, they don't, when they're done, they don't sign out. If you don't sign out, when you try to come here, you're gonna get an error. So um, if you get an error coming here, there's usually a thing that says sign out, click it, just close this window, click on the, the, click on this single sign in URL again so that you can get to it. Um, notice it didn't ask me for use ID and password. It has a, a single sign in URL that takes you right in um, to the environment. So we're going to go to EC2. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to upload, uh, I think I know where my public key is. So let's upload my public key. So they have this key here. Once again, I mentioned that uh, if you go to details, which I'm not going to do because it's showing, it'll show some things I don't want you to see. Um, it, you can actually download the private key that they've already created for you. Um, I'm going to import a key pair. Gepper. And I'm using Linux, so it's going to be in my home, .ssh, but it's the same with Windows if you've put it right, if you've created one. It's idrsa.pub. I think, I think that's my default import. Um, so we'll find out if I can connect to the Linux instance, then that's the right one. Um, I don't think I've hidden it. So let's see. We've got that. So let's go to the e EC2 instances. We're going to launch an instance. And like I mentioned, so we're going to use Linux 2 AMI. You do have Red Hat as well, um, Mac, um, SUSE, Ubuntu. Some of these will not run uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the lab environment. So I, I'm going to use Amazon Linux. That one I do know runs well. It's kind of uh, Red Hat-ish. Um, from that family. So T2 micro is what I'm going to use. Uh, review and launch. And I'm just leaving everything default. So I'm letting it create a, a security group with uh, port 22. There, there is something that I might want to do, uh, depending on what I was going to, going to do with that. And that would be the security, um, not the security group, but you could actually, um, Attach since you don't have access to AMI. Let's come back here. I think it's AMI role. Um, 
they have some roles that are defaultly created for you for the labs and they're pretty wide open. They can do a lot of stuff. So if you have to do something that needs authentication, so this EC2 instance is going to interact with the database, um, you'd need to assign a role to that. Um, well, if it's going to create a database or if it's going to create uh, other AWS things or if it's going to interact with Lambda, um, you might have to create the, the role here. So we're going to review and launch uh, and accept all the defaults. We're going to launch and it's going to ask me for the key. So this is where I'm going to choose um, an existing key pair and I'm using the Gepper one. I acknowledge that I have it because I'm hoping it's the right one. I have a lot of different keys. So um, it is possible that this won't work. Um, which is fine. So view instruction, no, I don't care. It's launching now, cool. So let's go, oh, view instances, yeah. So here it's starting, it has its IP already. So I can actually, I'm gonna click on this instance. It's not up and available yet, it's almost. Um, so I'm gonna just copy this IP address and I'm going to launch a terminal. And I'm just going to SSH. So since I'm using my private key that's in the right place, um, it's just, I, I don't need the dash I. Uh, and it's ec2-user is the default at and the IP. And it looks like it is up and available, so I'm adding it to my known hosts. So that's a little, um, this is a security feature. Um, to make sure there's not a man in the middle. So if those of you that understand SSH, great. Uh, you should only see this the first time you log in to an instance, but if you're using a lab, likely it's going away each time and you're gonna get a new IP every time. So you're gonna see that every time if you're just launching new ones. Um, I'm logged in, so I'm there. I can say top, I can hit one, and I can see there's only one CPU here. Um, and I can play with this Linux uh, box that's in the cloud. So this is EC2 user on my brand new instance. So just for kicks, um, I want to understand how this reset works. So I want to see if this reset is going to kill my EC2 instance. So I'm just going to click that. Uh, it'll delete all your content and replace it with starter code. So that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to cancel. Um, so by the way, if I come here to here, I can sign out. And I'm out of the console, but that does not do anything to this um, system. So I can say for a in, we'll just do a quick for loop, um, one, 200, uh, do echo a uh, sleep. So we'll give it a two second pause so it doesn't go as fast as a computer and done. Um, so this is just going to echo a number to the screen every two seconds, counting from one to 200. And so you can see it's still running, uh, even though I've logged out. That's because I've logged out of the data center, but the data center is still there. Now, um, and this is almost like a, it's a data group of data centers of data centers from a virtual standpoint. Um, if you, as you take this course, you'll understand that a VPC is kind of a virtual data center and we can actually have multiple. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna end this lab. So uh, just so you see, we're up to 19 over here, 20. So as soon as I click end lab and yes, I come back over here, you're gonna see this quickly die um, because it's gonna to start to terminate all the processes. There you go. So it's already gone. So my server's gone, a bunch of other things, anything to be able to connect to. So you can, you, it says you can close this message box now, lab resources are terminating. It might take a, a couple minutes to do um, because it, it has to clean up uh, the, what it did to start. And it took a while to start. Uh, most of these labs, except for the sandbox in foundation, start rather quickly, five-ish minutes um, or less. Uh, but some of them in others, so for example, data analytics, um, there's one that takes an hour to start uh, on average, well, 55 minutes. Um, 
on the few times that I've done it. Um, and so I can't just go ahead and start this lab. If I, if I say to start, it's probably going to say, yeah, it's still in cleanup. Okay. Um, so it's still in cleanup. You need to give it a little bit of time, then you can come back and you can start it again. But um, the when I start it again in foundations, uh, my key is going to be gone. It's a whole new environment. So um, that's what I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll play with another one next time.